I don't know how closely you were watching the news this past week, but if you were watching closely, or maybe if you weren't, you might have seen that there was an incident on the campus of the University of Florida. A white supremacist, whose name I shall not utter in these holy precincts, was invited to come and speak. And, at least in part, because the University of Florida is funded by the government, it was decided that what he had to say was protected free speech. Heinous, though what he had to say is. And all manner of protests were planned, rightly so. But there was one, just one, that was going to make sure that everyone on the campus knew what was going on. Most of the protests, people had to stand outside the speaking venue or get inside the speaking venue or open up their Facebook or read the paper to experience. But there's one group on that campus who had the power to make everyone there know what their feelings were. And so they got up early that morning and they began to climb the steps to Century Tower. And I have to wonder, as they were climbing the steps, if they weren't thinking at least a little about Martin Luther. On the 31st of this year, it'll be the 500th anniversary of the moment they say that he nailed those 95 theses to the door of the cathedral in Wittenberg. And I wonder if these musicians climbing the tower that day knew that, if they knew the impact that what Luther would do would have not only on the world, but on music itself. Luther was right that in the early days, it seems that everyone in the congregation sang together, and maybe they sang in the, uh, in the language that they spoke on the streets. But over time, things had changed, and by the Middle Ages, Luther's time... Only the choir and the clergy sang, and they did that in a language that nobody understood. Well, everyone else stood silent, and so it was one of the core commitments of the Protestant reformers to give song back to the people. Not just to give it to the people, but to give it to them in language that they could understand. And this was so important to them that people died for the right to sing hymns in church. They risked persecution, arrest, torture, being burned at the stake to sneak through the towns of their cities to the outskirts and the hidden places. And they looked for places with big, thick walls and no windows because they knew that if they managed to get together and started to sing, it would shake the dust from the rafters. They loved it so much. So I wonder if the people climbing the steps of the bell tower last Thursday had all that in mind as they planned their protest, as they climbed up and up and up to the top and as they took their shoes off and as they scooted onto the bench of the carillon there in Century Tower. As they flexed their fingers in preparation to push down on those big levers and to step on them with their feet, did they know this about song? They must have. Did they feel like they'd been training their whole lives to play that big tower-sized instrument that would be heard everywhere across that campus as they prepared to play? And did they know what it would mean when they started to play Lift Every Voice and Sing? the black national anthem, they call it. Well, that white supremacist drove across the campus and his supporters came to hear him speak. Did they know what it would do in the hearts of the people on the ground when they began to sing that song that had been played at NAACP meeting after NAACP meeting after rally after rally, been sung in church after church after church to remind the people what they had been through and where they were going and who their God was and what their God was going to do. That song written by the first lawyer who was black 
to be admitted to the bar in Florida. That song written by that man for school children, black school children, to recite on Abraham Lincoln's birthday almost a hundred years ago. Did they have all that in their minds as they began to push those levers down? Did they know how song gets into the heart and preaches when words alone cannot? Of course they did. Will you stand up, if you can, and take your hymnals when you do it? Turn to number 593 and sing with those brave caroliniers. Sing with a hundred years of protest against violence. Sing as if black lives matter, because they do. <laughs> 